What's up guys, Leopold the Brave here. My hair is gross, I'm not very presentable, but Samurai Jack vs. Afro Samurai is out, so I gotta get on it before um, I get spoiled since I'm a big versus guy. I like versus stuff. Um, uh, but I am excited for this battle because I am a huge fan of Samurai Jack. Don't know much about Afro Samurai, but from what I saw in the preview, he was pretty cool. So, we're gonna check this out. <clears throat> and I'm rooting for Jack, betting on Jack. I hope Jack wins, but I won't be upset or disappointed if Afro wins, because Afro still looks cool. Maybe I'll watch Afro Samurai after this, um, <clears throat> but anyways, here we go. Uh, three, two, one, go. This episode is brought to you by Honey, the free shopping uh, app honey automatically and the best promo yay. codes on the web, so you get the best prices for everything you buy online. We use it all the time. I'm using it right now. Look, I just saved five bucks on pizza. There's no pizza. reason to add honey to your browser today. It's free, just takes two clicks to install, and will save you money. Click the link below to add honey to Saving your money. Who doesn't want to do that? Or go to oh. joinhoney.com slash battle. That's joinhoney.com slash battle. Slash death battle. I, I'm still not used to this new theme. The samurai is one of the most I still like Invader more. Dangerous. Just personal no, let's preferences. Get two of the best of them in a fight to the death. Samurai Jack, the warrior prince lost in time. Watch out. And Afro Samurai, who's one cold-blooded mother ever. He's Wiz and I'm Boomstick. And it's our job to analyze their weapons, armor, and skills to find out who <laughs> would win a death battle. Oh yeah, the hand-drawn animation, it looks so good. Long ago, in a distant land, Aku, the shape-shifting master of darkness, unleashed an unspeakable, unspeakable evil. But, but a foolish samurai warrior wielding, wielding a magic sword. sword <laughs> My to tongue got twisted. Me. I, I mean him. And that nameless <laughs> samurai became known <laughs> as Jack. Man. Jack was out. Jack, My tongue got twisted. Jack, I'm sad. Jack, Jack, Jack. <laughs> Doesn't really strike fear into your enemies. Young Jack was the son of a Japanese emperor. Who uh, I can't read those little tabs up there. My eyeballs, I, I have Haku's poor vision. Return, I have to emperor lean in. Quickly defeated. The last All right, just talking about his real name never being shown. Son. Okay. <laughs> oh, look how small he is. <clears throat> well, uh, He's so cute and tiny. Not out of a coup, little Jack traveled the world, training with the best of the best. Most notably, he learned horseback riding from a sheik, staff fighting in Africa, wrestling from gladiators, Axe throwing from a Russian boyar. Yeah, he Mounts learned a lot. Mongols, martial arts from Shaolin monks, and, and archery from freaking Robin Hood. You know, everyone's <laughs> favorite talking fox. Ooh, da lolly. Wrong Robin Hood. That's My favorite opinion. talking fox is Fox McCloud. Old, he defended Yay. The village from a band of marauders. All before he could even legally drink the good stuff. 17 years later, he was ready for the final boss. He just needed one more thing. His pajamas. No, no, no. his katana. katana <laughs> Honestly, I would wear that as pajamas. Same, that looks comfy as heck. I like loose sleeves. Aku pulled a bitch move and zapped him hundreds of years into the future. What a waste. Just like when you spend four sleepless <laughs> years struggling through college and then find out too late that nobody cares about your English major. I thought you graduated <laughs> from the school of evil science or something. Well, you still have to pick a major. Should have chosen a more practical one, Wiz, like mine. Anyway, even <laughs> though he was trapped in the future... All right, they're keeping Jack consistency with Wiz and Boobstick, the poultry science. The ...and take down Aku. And he had the right weapon for the job. See, Aku cannot be harmed by conventional means. Thus, a special blade was forged by... Well, he can, he just can't be... It's just really hard. Because, I mean, the giant stone samurai was still able to harm him. Uh -huh. incorruptible. And but yeah, is Jack's katana an extremely effective weapon? It can absorb and redirect energy, including fire, vaporize beings of evil, and slice through nearly any substance, even adamantium. The Wolverine Super Metal? Why is that there? <laughs> Probably just coincidental naming, but it is shown to be stronger than steel. Or it could uh, be a reference. So the sword's pretty awesome, but so is Jack. So He's Samurai Jack could beat Wolverine. This giant pillar, tough enough to survive a I mean, he already could, but that was just confirmation. To defeat six Adamantium. In the time it took for one drop of water to hit the ground. By timing the drop, all this had to have taken place in about one third of a second. He's like Whew. a ninja samurai. Ninja Mirai. Actually, he is trained in ninjutsu, which probably helped when he was forced to dodge beams of sunlight. 
for this one in particular, it's clear Jack began dodging after the beam was fired. Mm -hmm. By examining both Jack and the beam's movement frame by frame, we've concluded his highest reaction speeds must be nearly 70% the speed of light. Yep, just remember, just because you're dodging light doesn't automatically make you the speed of light. It depends on the distance and all that kind of stuff. Plus, Jack was looking at it, so... Yes, that. By strapping yeah. a giant boulder on his back, which compared to his height, we can determine to weigh 39 tons, Jack learned how to leap high enough to clear these trees. Crouching tiger, he can jump terrible. good. These trees are jump pretty good. big, and this jungle has a bunch of these ugly baboons running around. And if they're I not were a ugly, man, which they're I am, awesome. I'd say that this is the African rainforest, where the average tree is about 130 feet tall. Tibs on Jack for my basketball team. Guys got hops. <laughs> we haven't even mentioned the time he survived Boomstick just did a math. With his friend, the Scotsman. Yes! Why does he look so familiar? Well, I like it. Familiar. With so much talent, it was only a matter of time. He's got that southern accent, home, that hillbilly accent down. But it took a lot longer I mean, I've heard some familiar terms. Yeah. yeah, good thing time travel makes you stop aging for some reason. But Jack's a good-hearted soul, like a Boy Scout who hasn't discovered Twitter yet. He can be pretty. I love it when Jack smiles. He's so happy. <laughs> also, he continues to prolong his lonely journey over and over, just because he frequently puts the needs of others before his own. Still, the forces yep. of evil should watch out for Samurai Jack. Watch out! All oh, this clip. Wait for it. Who else wants some? Yeah. Yeah. The stories that surround the two All right. sacred headbands are I saw the preview the for this, but not the full analysis because obviously this What's is a so first time reaction. So let's find out about Afro what Samurai. They were created by the gods, or they can grant the wearer supernatural powers. But in truth, the headbands only bring pain and loss. Such was the case with Afro Samurai. Yeah, I found this to be a pretty cool concept. Because, like, the number one headband means that only number two can challenge you. And the number two headband is the only one that can challenge you number one. But everyone's going to come after the number two headband. I don't know, it's confusing. Wiz is going to explain it. And the only person who can challenge the number one is whoever possesses the number two. Mm -hmm. In contrast, anybody can challenge the owner of the number two for the right to wear that headband, and thus gain the right to challenge the number one. So, like, you just I know that's such a cool concept, though. Because some people could do it just for safety. If you have the number one headband, you're safe from everyone, the entire population, except for number two. But if you have the number two headband in an attempt to gain the number one, then you're pretty much a target to everyone who's after the number two. Why does this always happen? You know, I always So having these headbands is also extremely safe, but also extremely dangerous. And it's just a neat concept. Like, if people are trying to rule the world, or they just want it to be safe. It's just interesting. I like this concept a lot, so I'm probably going to check it out after this episode. left Afro alone to mourn his loss. So, of course, Afro swore revenge and started learning swordsmanship. Also, sorry I'm talking a bunch at this particular part. Because I, I've already seen Afro's preview, so I've already heard this stuff. I'll stop talking when we get into the new things. I just think Afro's cool. I'm interested. Kendo is all about how to kill an opponent as fast as possible, while Kendo is more about discipline and being zen and stuff. Naturally, Afro preferred the more kick-ass one. Also, when it gets to the ad, I may have to mute it, because a couple times they've used, they've used copyrighted music for the ad, so I don't want to get claimed. <clears throat> so when he found out that Swordmaster had the number two headband all along, he knew what he had to do. And now he can Aww, take down rip. the guy who killed his dad. Alongside his new friend, slash burden, Ninja Ninja. Oh, come the f*** on! Where'd this guy come from? Now don't we look like shit? How you been, man? <laughs> well, it's not entirely clear. He's there, but at the same time, not there. Ninja Ninja is believed to be the guardian of the number two headband. 
but all he ever really does is talk, talk, and talk some more. He got arrows and grenades and shit! You ain't got no chance, dude! <laughs> a possible Ninja Ninja is simply a figment of Afro's mind, brought about by psychological stress. You know, I have an imaginary friend. Aren't you a little old for that? Not for Al Gundy! He's a gun who also talks to me. He tells me to do stuff. Okay. Anyway, to be honest, calling Afro a samurai is a bit misleading. He's actually yeah. more akin to a ronin, a samurai with no master. Hmm. And so, with his swordsmanship perfected, Afro wandered the world searching for justice, carrying an arsenal. Samurai rules are very strict, so I would prefer to have no master if I were a samurai. Like Shadan would be a ronin, just like Wiz said. He also has a steel comb, which can be a surprisingly effective offensive and defensive tool. And since he doesn't care about that honor BS, he's not afraid to play dirty by attacking with his sandals. But while on the road to justice, Afro's number two headband attracted all manner of dangerous mm -hmm. enemies. That's what, what I was talking about. More than capable of dealing with each and every one of them. He's strong enough to cut other swords in half, throw his sheath through another guy's throat, and even tear Ew. off metal arms. Pretty impressive, as many modern metals have tensile strength as high as 80,000 pounds per square inch. Avro is fast enough to cut bullets out of thin air, and even a laser beam. I should note that it's not a plasma-based beam. It bounces off reflective surfaces, doesn't explode upon contact, and it's literally labeled a laser. This means mm -hmm. Avro blocked a beam that moved as fast as light, more than 670 million miles per hour. Get this, that laser beam came from a robot version of Avro. Talk about metal! This Afro droid could easily smash up a car, and our boy Afro just tore it apart! He survived getting hit by rockets. Ooh, that's a lot of stuff. This RPG that fragmented a giant cliff face. A RPG in a backpack? <laughs> <laughs> I think I smell math coming. This tree nearby is most likely a Japanese mountain ash, which can sometimes grow as high as 30 feet. With that in mind, we can They are calculating a lot more in Afro's analysis, so I'm predicting Jack's going to win definitely. <laughs> I mean, I was already predicting that, but usually when they do more calculations in one person's analysis, that person loses because they save all the calculations for the winner and the results. Where do I get it? And he stood in his way. It's a it's a pattern with Death Battle. Go back and watch a ton of episodes and you'll notice. Justice took his revenge in hand and proved to the world that Afro Samurai is number one. Why you gotta kill all my men? Why you gotta kill me? Nothing personal. It's just revenge. <laughs> Nothing personnel, kid. All right, the combatants are All right, let's I might have to mute this if this ad has copyrighted music. First, so let's see. Swords makes me want to sharpen uh, my knives for my blue apron meal tonight. Oh boy. All right, so this seems like a standard ad. No, I don't know if that background music is copyrighted. Oh boy. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm I'm trying to figure out the music. I have no idea if this background music is copyrighted, like behind their narration. I I can't tell. I have no way of telling. Oh boy. All right, I think they're just about done. Come on. It's time yep, there we go. Oh boy. Whoo! I cannot wait to see this. Go, Jack. Oh, it's so pretty. <laughs> I want the Scotsman to be on the other side of that bridge so badly, but I know it's Afro. <laughs> Your sword smells of blood. So does yours. <laughs> oh, it's so good. I don't care if I've already seen the little animation preview of this. Watching it again is just... Mm. Mm. 
Rude. Rude to Jack. Yeah, Jack can fight without looking, like with the arrows and stuff. Ooh. <laughs> he was being polite. Stop being rude. Oh. Oh. Oh boy, there goes his sword. Season 5 all over again. Oh. Grab it. Grab it. <laughs> Alright, Jack's winning. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, that is. Woof. <laughs> Gee. Woo. Clap for the animation. Afro was an exceptional <laughs> warrior, and his skills would absolutely dominate most sword fights. However, Jack has had a <sighs> lot of experience with opponents who fight dirty, and Afro yep. could not stand up to his physical superiority. Yeah, Afro never showed strength like how Jack lifted that 39-ton boulder. Jack could react as fast as 70% the speed of light. Afro did block that light speed laser beam, but based on the distance between him and the Afro droid, he only needed to react around 21% the speed of light to do this, hmm. still putting him at impressive relativistic speeds, but not even half as quick as Jack. Also, while Afro survived that mega-sized RPG explosion, don't forget how Jack survived a fall from orbit. While it does seem the spacesuit was yep. responsible for Jack surviving reality, they're about to do some calc. This is what I'm talking about. They usually only the calc impact. a lot of stuff for the Start winner from the in the results. So if one character is missing a lot of calcs in their Jack analysis, the then they're probably going to win because they're saving it for the results. Seconds, moving well over terminal velocity, thanks to being propelled by mm -hmm. exploding space beams. Which means his top velocity was approximately 37,000 miles per hour. Adding mm -hmm. the spacesuit's weight to his own, this means his impact force must have equaled about 19 megatons of force. Oh yeah. Way more than anything Afro survived. And then he just got up and walked away. Badass. In the end, Jack was just too fast, too strong, too tough, and too well trained for Afro. Oh, this is such a good episode. And Clap for this episode. The winner is Samurai Jack. Watch out. Thanks for watching. If you guys want exclusive All right, who's on next? The episode, just click that little box right over there. And if you want the battle music from this episode, you can get Let's it find out. in the description. Oh, Carnage. Meet versus you. Oh, whoever you are from El Elfin lied. Elfin lead? I don't know. Lucy. Whoever Lucy is versus Carnage. That's going to be interesting. I'm obviously going for Carnage because I don't know who the other person is, but I guess we'll find out in three weeks. But that was a good episode. We pulled the brave out.